Hello, people of YouTube. I'm John, and today we're looking at not one, but two locomotives from Atlas. So let's go over to the workbench and take a look. All right, so here's what we're looking at today. This is an HO scale Fairbanks Morse H16 44 locomotive and an H15 44 locomotive. These come from Atlas and they range in price from $169.95 for the DCC ready version up to $279.95 for the DCC and sound equipped version. These come from Atlas's Master Series. And the ones I have here are DCC equipped with Loke Sound version 5 DCC decoders that were installed at the factory. And depending which road name you pick, you'll either get a 1644 or a 1544. Your best bet would be to look on Atlas's website and see if they have the one you're looking for. These models are packed with exploded view diagrams as well as warranty cards and DCC decoder information. They also come in these wonderful boxes with screws on the bottom that hold the locomotives in place. I've complained about this before on other product spotlights, but what I don't complain about is the fact that this screw system really protects the locomotives, handrails, and detail parts very well. I've never received an Atlas locomotive with broken detail parts. Since these are basically the same model other than the horsepower, I'm going to review these together as a pair. So the green one in the back, decorated for Southern Railway, is the 1644. And the red one in front, which is the Rock Island, is the 1544. So we'll work our way around the Rock Island one first. And I do want to mention that if you look at this model, you'll notice that the guy inside is facing that direction. And there's a little F right here, which designates that this on the right side is the front of the locomotive. So yes, they did run these long hood forward. And the green Southern model is the same way. But that being said, I guess you know now that there's a cab figure in there. I did take a close look at the paint on these models and it's especially nice. Something I want to mention that I think is really cool, and I'll do this in a way that you'll be able to see this, is the fact that the trucks are different. And that's a prototype specific detail. So anyway, let's take a closer look here. I'm really excited about this. Anyway, moving along, you can also see that there are some air reservoir detail parts down here, clearly visible from the side, and then the fuel tank detail as well. And you know I'm going to comment about this paint job. The separation lines between the white and the red are perfect. I mean, this is a really sharp looking paint job, and I especially like the pinstripes down the stairwell. I guess that's like a safety stripe, as well as down here. As we're looking at this, you can also see that there's hose detail on both sides. This is a wire cut lever. And then this is also a separately applied wire grab here. And of course, it's going to be using an LED here. And something that's different about these models is that the marker lights are said to work. So we'll be taking a look at that later, looking at the front detail from this angle you can see it also has an air hose right there so it has all the hose detail that you would want on a locomotive so looking at the fireman side you can see the f designating the front is also here you can see the detail in the trucks i'm looking back in there and you can see brake shoe detail that's pretty cool and then the uh, cab figure is in fact facing that direction designating that as the front Something else that's on this side that I didn't notice before is the horn right here. Bet they had a lot of deaf firemen on the Rock Island back in those days. 
Also, you can see there's a separately applied brake wheel just behind where he's sitting. The rear of the locomotive has similar detail to that on the front, including the separately applied grab, separately applied cut lever, air hose detail, pinstriping on the step wells, and down here. Uh, it's just a very nice looking model, and uh, something else I'm noticing on this side that I didn't really notice on the front, but it is there, is that there's separately applied windshield wipers as well. And looking at the rear from this angle, you can see the brake hose that I was talking about in the front as well. Looks great. I'm going to go a little out of order here because I want to end with a side shot so that I can show you the difference in the trucks. And I'm sure if you're observant, you're going to see other subtle differences between these two models. But I do want to also point out that there's another horn. So there was a horn in front of the engineer and then another horn behind the fireman or conductor. Pretty cool. But this is what I want to show you on the roof. This is a photo etched grill and look how deep this fan detail looks. That's one of the best looking fans I think I've seen on a straight out of the box Atlas model. That's very cool. So anyway, let's set this up on its side and we're going to bring in the green one and you're going to see how different the trucks look. Pay attention to the trucks. So I had to add a little light to our picture here and if you look you can see that the trucks are definitely a different style and it says on the website what they are I don't have it open at the moment but uh, we're gonna go around this green locomotive just like we did on the red one so you can see how the details are and what everything looks like something to point out quickly since we're here is the fact that there's the horn that was on the other one as well I can see it from this angle. You can't, but I can. But there are separately applied windshield wipers on both the uh, front and rear windshield. And then I didn't notice this on the other one. So there are a little, you know, subtle differences going on between the two models. The builder's plate is here on this one. It was under the cab on the other one. But there is an F here signifying the front of the locomotive. All right, now looking at the front of the locomotive. I'm really digging these barricade stripes. That looks really cool. If you've been watching these product spotlights, you knew I was going to say that. It just looks really sharp to me. Something else I want to mention about this paint job is that all the separation lines, and there are a bunch of them, because you have, well, first of all, you have black down here that meets up with white, and then there's a really thin yellow stripe, then lots of green, and then some more very thin yellow. And all the markings on this locomotive are really sharp. I don't know how they're doing their paint these days, but I haven't seen a fuzzy separation line on a model in quite some time. Anyway, you can see the hose details here, as well as the cut lever, just like on the red one. And then there is an air hose behind the coupler. And I should mention these are Accumate knuckle couplers. And then, of course, wanted to show you the front end from this angle so that you can see the air hose back here. Something I'm thinking is pretty cool, too, is this is number 6548, right? And the 6 is down on the body, and the 5 and 4 are up on this raised headlight housing. And then the 8 is back down on the body. That's pretty cool. All right, looking at the fireman's, all right, looking at the fireman's side once again. You can see that the horn is here behind the fireman's head as well as a separately applied brake wheel and this logo looks really good i looked at that under magnification and it does not look that small this is really well done and once again looking at the rear of the locomotive this one also is detailed very much like the other side the front with the barricade stripes and all the separately applied you know, cut lever, grab, hose detail. There's an air hose behind the coupler there. And then, again, the headlight housing is separating the 6 and the 5.4 uh, and the 8. Pretty cool. Like I said, there's the air hose here. And, of course, the other MU hoses and all that. Looks good. Nice safety stripes along the stairwell. 
And since we're looking at it here, might as well point out the windshield wiper is a separately applied part. And again, looking at the top, photo etched grill, super deep detailed fan. That looks really good. I keep talking about how the trucks are different. This is what I'm talking about. The one on the left looks different from the one on the right. This is a prototype specific detail that they went through a lot of trouble to get right. All right, well, you know, it's always my favorite thing to run the locomotive or locomotives in this case. So let's give this thing a run and see how it does. Sounds pretty chunky. It's nice and smooth. I'm going to run it real slow. Atlas uses a five pole skewed armature motor and it allows for very low speed like this. They're among the best that I've seen. It sounds really good too. All right, now for the red one.
right, since we already have the red one up on the track, we're going to take a look at the lights on this one first. Check this out. It actually comes with a headlight, which as I mentioned before, is a golden white LED. Looks really good. What this model has though, that they don't usually come with, are marker lights. And the headlight and the marker lights are directional. So when you're going forward, you'd have green on in the front. And when I switch direction, the headlight and the marker lights change. The headlight goes off because it's directionally pointed toward the rear of the locomotive. And the marker lights turn to a red color. That is really cool. Let's take a look at the rear of the locomotive. And I'll show you the lights do the same thing on that side. So I've turned the model around and it's now basically facing rear word. Is that a word? I think it is. And when I switch directions, now you have red marker lights and the headlight goes off. So I do want to point out that the marker lights you can see shine not only backward, but also off to the side, which I thought was kind of a cool touch especially the one that's closer to us, to the left of the headlight, you can see that there's actually two little lights. One is facing toward the side of the locomotive and the other one is facing toward the back. And if I were to turn this around and show you the other side, it's doing the same thing on the other side, on the right side of the screen. It's pretty cool. All right, so I've put our green model here. And same thing, we're looking at the front first. And I'll go ahead and turn on the marker lights and the headlight, as you can see green marker lights when facing forward or, or in the forward direction. And when you switch directions, the headlight goes off and the marker lights change to red, just like on the other one. So they are directional. Let's turn this one around and we'll look at the rear end of this model. So looking at the rear, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn it all on here. So like I said a minute ago, we're facing the rear direction. There's your headlight and green marker lights and then switching to the forward direction you get red marker lights and the headlight goes off because again it's directional that's really cool i'm excited about that i really enjoyed taking a closer look at these models i don't know if prior releases of the fm 1644 and 1544 came with those working class lights but i really like them a lot and I think that if Atlas is going to be putting stuff out like this, they're really stepping up their game. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.